Well, I've had an opportunity to talk to Ted Johnson, president of the World of Outlaws, and he said that next year, in, in talking about this, as you watch Doug Clark, the starter here, getting everybody lined back up, that they're taking a hard look at going to standard tubing on the top and bottom rails for these cars, and that the down tubes will be different, but they also will have standard tubing. The cage is already taken care of. Everybody pretty much has to be with standard tubing thickness. Of course, that standard tubing thickness that will be uh, prescribed by the World of Outlaws will add to that weight, so maybe the weight on these cars will come up just from the wall thickness that will be coming with these cars in 1998. Dave Reed? Talked to the brothers Swindell during the red flag incident. Jeff did make it out, got the push rod problem fixed, but they've got another problem now, so they figure they're running on six or seven cylinders. As far as your race leader, Sammy Swindell, actually your second place car, they dropped a half a pound out of the right rear to try to tighten that race car up. That's the story about the Swindells. One to watch will be Johnny Herrera, the 47 car, the one that won this last year. He went from 17th to 9th in one lap. We're back to green. The King's Royal back underway. There's the cone. They'll have to go around that without running over it. Kinzer, Sammy, Jack Hodgefield, Mark Kinzer, Gary Frazier, Donnie Schott. That is your top six cars. Dave Laney runs to seven. Herrera now up to eight. See the difference in the line. Steve Kinzer and Sammy Swindell took the high line. Jack Hodgefield and Mark Kinzer both went to the bottom. Now they're back up to speed. They elected to go back to the top of the with Gary Brazier and Dave Blaney. Blaney dives to the bottom in the yellow number 10, the vibrant car. The Australian driver dips back to the bottom himself and returns the slide job. Gary Brazier acts like he's ran here for years. I mean, he knows the slide jobs. He knows how to counteract the slide job. And uh, he's doing a good job for uh, a great job for all those experience. That is the fight for fifth that you were watching. Blaney, a two-time winner get his third as the month of money gets underway 50 grand up for grabs tonight what is it about this australian driver that's making him pretty quick tonight do you think well like he said earlier he just likes the high speed racetrack you know the bigger the better for him and, and put the hammer down and run as hard as you can and that's that's kind of uh, amazing to me because australia most of the racetracks are little quarter miles that are kind of a pea gravel type surface and uh, for him to adapt to this and, and be comfortable with it is, is, a, is pretty good yo we got one spinning that team Jacobs. Jacobs. Boy, oh, look at Jack Hodgefield and Sammy Swindell diving through there as the leaders he went into traffic. We're going to stay green. He's going to have to get going again, but Doug Clark leaves the green out. Well, not for long. This, uh, this brings out the yellow. Uh, Dean had to stop. He knew he was in trouble. He lost a lot of ground, so uh, he possibly just stopped to bring out the yellow flag so he can... Uh, He'll have to go to the tail, but at least he can catch up and, and, and get a slow lap to get to the tail. Watch Steve Kinzer in the Quaker State car. He's trying to put a lap on the 3G of Joe Gertie here. And he's going into turn Dean. three. Right there up high. Right in front of the leader. Steve flies past. Now watch as he goes in and the nerf bar in the back of the tail tank rubbing up on the wall, causing all those sparks. This is about what we saw Sammy do earlier in, in Save It. Um, you guys are doing a good job. The rear tires are stopped at that point. I think it refired the engine as he started back down the bank again. But uh, he stopped here on the front straightaway. And again, that will put him to the tail. Dean Jacobs qualifying for his second King's Royal here tonight. Having problems as working Woody comes to check him out. To Steve Evans. Well, guys, and that we have a yellow out, I'd like to take just a moment to extend our best wishes to one of our comrades here at Diamond Peace Sports, our unit manager, Paul Grubb. Paul is going through some very difficult uh, family times. And, Paul, if you're watching live here on CNN from your mom's house out in Oregon, our best wishes to you and your entire family. And please come back quickly because we found out how hard it is to be a unit manager. I mean, I'm hauling ice, man. you got to get back and help us. Okay, when we come back, we'll see a restart of the Kings Royal. We're packed high atop this jam-packed grandstand here at Eldora as you take a look at the top five for the 14th annual Kings Royal. Only seven of the 40 laps completed. Gary Frazier hanging in there in fifth. And Mark Kinzer still riding around in fourth. Doug Noe no e. Clark, your flag man here tonight. Doug is quick to point out there is no E in you know, these yellows aren't really helping Steve Kinzer with that harder compound uh, 
uh, tire, you know, the, the harder compound tends to feel over sometimes on a, on a restart, which means it, it loses traction. And uh, being a harder compound, the longer you run, generally the better it gets. So there's three wide coming out of turn four. Mark Kinsley gets under hot shield. So Mark now moves up to third. Hot almost into the wall down there in one and two. Jeff Swindell, that 7CW, he's struggling. He's a lap car. The fight is with Blaney trying to get up to Brazier. That is a fight back in fifth position right now. And Look here it. comes Johnny Herrera inside of Blaney. He Remember, started. he started 17th, Brad. Look at this. And driving where nobody else right through the bottom to the middle of the racetrack. Gil Sauter spins the wrenches on this car. And he has got him another one here tonight. Look at this. Here comes Herrera again now. Johnny Herrera started 17th. He is running fifth. Last year's Kings Royal winner looking to do it again here tonight. And using a line that nobody else, no, none of the fast cars are using yet, right around the bottom in the middle of the racetrack. Steve Kinzer is your leader. Sammy Swindell second. Mark Kinzer third. Jack Hotfield fourth. And it's Herrera fifth. Brazier sixth. Dave Blaney now moving down to the bottom. He runs in seventh. What His car is not set up properly to run down there. He moved back to the top. And your leader, Steve Kinzer, the Quaker State number 11, he's up against the wall. He actually slapped it right there. And we saw that three car of Joe Gurdy dive underneath that. I mean, that's not the position. Joe Gurdy is a lap down. Steve's got a, uh, well, not comfortable lead. Uh, Sammy's probably eight to ten car lengths behind him. Sammy's going down the channel lock number one with Mark Kinzer about that far back in third. But, uh, a lot, a lot of heavy lap traffic coming up. Front he's got Steve. Dale Blaney in front of him who comes out of the All-Star Tour running his brother Dave's engine tonight. Sammy Swindell, you can see the blue number one closing in, and here's the fight for third. The five, the white and orange number 5M. He holds the position. That's Mark Kinzer. The yellow number 22 of Jack Hodgefield coming up after him as they go now around Joe Gurney with 25 to go. And you might have noticed Sammy Swindell in the channel lot number one clear on the bottom and three and four as well. He's trying. Everybody's looking around, trying different lines. And Hodge will make the pass, and look at Mark up on the wall. Will that bring out a yellow? He's still rolling. Something, either he's got a flat, yes, yeah, he's right where tire's flat. It sure is. And he waves at Doug Clark, who now waves the yellow. Mark Kinzer, who has never won the Kings Royal, is going to struggle to do it here tonight. His right rear was going down before he hit the wall, Ralph. The way the car acted, it was go going down before he got into the wall. See the car just kind of go in there and slide and slide and slide. It's down at that point. And then he goes up there and just, just brushes the wall. But it gets the right front up on there. Probably no damage to the right front. It might have bent the right front uh, wheel of the axle back just a little bit, but not enough to hurt him. Mark Kinzer has won 17 of the 45 starts he has made with the World of Outlaws in 1997. We'll be right back for more from Eldor. They've completed the tire change on the working 5M of Mark Kinzer as we come back to you live from the Eldora Speedway in Rossburg, Ohio. Of course, he will tag the back of the line since he changed a tire. And there he is getting pushed off. Brad, as you take a look at the field out here right now and you see Steve Kinzer and Sammy Swindell running first and second and all the young guys chasing these two veterans, I think experience paying off here tonight and they had a better idea how to set up at least early on here. Well, and like you and I, I you and I spoke that uh, these guys have a lot of laps here too and uh, we talked about Dave and, and Jack earlier Kinzer's been here a long time too him and Sammy both but yeah they got that 40 right rear tire the experience told them to maybe take the chance and go with that and this car being the mile car this is a lot of this is obviously a high speed racetrack so it's not hurting them as, that much and uh, maybe they can hang on let's check in with Bobby Gerald well Ralph and Brad a, a question for Brad here on that red flag the initial red flag Steve Kinzer came in and they changed the gears the rear end of the car. They went to a lower gear. Steve said he wanted to do that to get the car off the corner a little bit better. Now, Dave Reef has a story in Mark's pit, but Brad, make sure and talk about that. Dave? Well, I'm down with the Working America crew. You can see right here the problem for Mark Kinzer. They don't know if this hole was quite that big before they hit the wall, but that was the cause of their problem, a big cut in the tire. Bobby talking about that gear. He went to a lower gear to get more RPMs. He must have been bogging the engine coming off the corner, so they went a little bit lower to keep the RPMs up in, up off the corner. Jeff Swindell kind of held up his brother Sammy. They can't pass anybody until 
until they go past that orange cone and Jeff was just in front of his brother and his car struggling to get going. As soon as he got past it, he cut down. Meanwhile, he was able to open up a healthy lead. Yeah, Jeff running on five or six or, six or seven cylinders, like you said here earlier. And he's just down around the bottom trying to stay out of the way right now. Here comes Hollywood Herrera. Charging to the front is Johnny Herrera. And I got to believe these cautions are helping him. See the line he's running, Ralph. Again, everybody's uh, just a Gary Brazier trying to get a spot back going around the top and going to do it. Oh, get just the door shut there, but maybe he'll get him here in three and in one and two. Johnny's right down there in the brown with his little bit of moisture yet, trying to uh, get a hold of everything he can down there. And Jeff Hodgefield's got wing. a problem with his pop wing, just like Herrera last year. Only a little bit more extreme. Now, this but, is the fight for third that you're watching, and Hodgefield with a huge problem on that wing. Last year, it, this, I will say, will affect, well, affect Hodgefield tonight more than did Johnny last year. Remember last year, the track got rubber down. It got real, real, real sticky, and it might have been to uh, Johnny's advantage last year, where tonight, track's a little drier. That's going to hurt Hodgefield. Mark Kinzer, by the way, back down pit road. He is out of this, and what, how will that car handle now with that big sideboard car? It's going to loosen it up as he enters the corner. He doesn't have the wing, but the uh, like a rudder to help slow the car, and, and the back of the car is going to get loose and get out from under him more. So Sammy Swindell, although, although I say that, and he's closed up on Sammy a little bit. And there is your fight behind them as you look at Gary Brazier. And on now, it seems to slowing down as you, as you look at him there. And there is Herrera trying to close in. Yeah, it, it's definitely slowing him down now. Uh, oh, we got one hard into the wall in turn two. Donnie Schatz, Schatz I, believe. I believe you're right. And Danny Lasoski spins to avoid him. Schatz took a big hit in turn two. You know, these guys keep trying. Now, this this could be good for Hodenshield. Exactly. This is exactly what Hodenshield... I, I thought of, I didn't want to say it. The Hodenshield needed a red. You know, I didn't want to jinx anybody, but that is exactly what uh, Hodenshield needed. And you know, the these, crew gets to Donnie Schatz to check on him. Here comes working Woody. These guys keep trying, but they're, they still haven't knock, knocked Earl's walls down yet. No. And Donnie now crawling out of the car. He's okay. Yeah, Hodenshield needed this. Oh, what what a uh, savior for him. Now they can change the wing, keep his position. They're checking with Donnie Schatz, who's doing such a great job in the Pennzoil Wool of Outlaw Rookie of the Year battle. Now watch the right side of your TV screen, and you'll a... see what happened to Donnie Schatz. There he is. That's coming out of turn two. He just got in a little high, that it looks like, and banged the, the wall with the right rear. That pulls the right front in, and when it does that, it climbs up, and usually you go for a ride just like that. Donnie finished eighth in the Kings Royal last year as a, as a rookie uh, here. Now, this year, of course, he's doing the whole rookie of the year points chase. Dave Reed. Mark Kendrick, Kings Royal going to have to wait one more year. What happened? Well, uh, we had a flat tire there, and the car rode the wall for some time. So, uh, I thought it might even turn over. I don't know. We got some problem in the steering or, or some drag links bent back. We'll just have to take a look at it. When we, when we restarted the race, she was a handful. So uh, we have to pull in and uh, save the work and maximum for another day. Well, they were three for four last year worth 230000 And Guy Forbrook has ordered a wing change for his driver, Jack Hodenshield. Bobby Gerald is there. That's right, guys. It was a long run from the turn four into the pits all the way down to the turn one into the pits. And that is where Jack Hottenshield's crew is going to work right now. And I ran with them. I'm a little winded myself. So these guys are winded, trying to change the top wing. They'll get, uh, they'll get Hod back out. And this red flag came at an opportune time. And the onboard camera took a beating in that one because that's where our onboard camera mount should be. Thanks, Hod. <laughs> we'll be back to Eldora.